Natural events which can cause problems to power systems are lightning, wind, ice, earthquake, fire, explosions, falling trees, or flying objects. Physical accidents include such things as a vehicle crashing into a pole, or perhaps animals or people coming into contact with live equipment, or a contractor digging into underground cables. An example of equipment failure would be, say, a breakdown of insulation in a transformer. An example of misoperation would be if the operator inadvertently closed the breaker to energize a line which was still solidly grounded. All of these abnormal conditions will result in a fault, that is, an unwanted short-circuit connection between one phase wire and another, or between a phase wire and ground. The consequence of the fault is usually a dramatic increase in the value of current flowing, and the resultant increase in heat produced in the conductors is the main cause of damage. The actual magnitude of fault current depends upon the amount of power available to feed into the fault. It's also dependent upon the resistance to flow, that is, the impedance between the fault and the source of power supply. The total impedance is made up of A, resistance of the fault itself, B, resistance and reactance, that is, impedance of the line conductors, C, impedance of any transformers or reactors in the circuit, and D, impedance of the generating source. The calculation of probable fault currents for different conditions is a very important task for the system designer. Now, why is this? Well, any switchgear which is installed must be capable of handling the fault current. If a breaker is undersized, it could be completely destroyed when trying to clear a heavy fault current. However, as you know, overcurrent is not the only effect resulting from fault conditions. For example, a fault in a generator could cause serious change to system conditions, such as undervoltage, a change in power and power factor, a change in direction of current and power flow, a change in frequency, a change in temperature inside the generator, physical movement, for example, the generator windings, I'm sure you can think of others, and it's these very changing conditions which allow the relays to sense and detect the presence of a fault.